New Morrison Planetarium is a radically different theater from a traditional planetarium. Instead of having all the seats facing the center with a star projector in the center like uh, the old school planetariums would have, we have a tilted theater that's uh, angled at 30 degrees with something like stadium seating so everyone is facing in the same direction and able to see images that really cover the entire dome and, and immerse the audience. The original Morrison actually made history with one of the first significant American star projectors. It was a completely unique optical design that created pinpoint stars over the entire original Morrison Planetarium Dome. We're doing things very differently now. Instead of using actual mechanical devices and lenses to create individual star points, which only allows you to see the stars as they would appear from Earth, we're instead designing things using video projectors and commodity graphics cards in order to create a very flexible digital planetarium environment. We're using six video projectors to cover the entire surface of our 75 foot diameter dome. And those individual projectors are driven by actually three separate clusters of computers that we have buried down in the basement underneath the planetarium. And those three clusters allow us to transition seamlessly between different sources. So we have real-time uh, software running on one cluster, a different collection of real-time software running on another, and then a playback uh, software running on the third. One of the challenges in a contemporary planetarium going digital like this is that there are different measures of the success of how well you've done in creating an image that covers this entire dome. Resolution is one. We have about a 3600 by 3600 image that we project over the entire dome. So one of the compromises that contemporary domes make is selecting a optimal resolution, but also looking at minimizing the, uh, the re internal reflections and getting the most contrast out of the projectors that we can. One of the things that the new technology allows us to do that is near and dear to my heart because I'm actually an astronomer by training is instead of looking at the stars as they appear from the night sky, being able to fly through the stars and actually go outside the Milky Way galaxy. Look at the structure of the large scale structure of the universe. In terms of scientific discoveries about the universe, one of the great changes that's taken place over the last decade or so are the incredibly detailed surveys of the large scale structure of the universe. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey is one of the most significant in that it's viewing a tremendous fraction of the sky and actually finding galaxies that are literally billions of light years away. That allows us to trace out the structure of the universe at a scale that we've never been able to achieve before. So we're also looking at ways of incorporating uh, up to the minute data in our presentations. For example, NASA is looking at ways of having school groups analyze parts of Mars because it's too much work for the limited number of planetary geologists out there. We could actually bring a classroom in here that's had a chance to analyze a portion of Mars and then fly them up to that part of the planet so they can see where they've been doing work on the planet Mars in context of the entire globe. So we're also looking at ways that we can use the planetarium to uh, connect with researchers who are out in the field. So we can actually fly up to Madagascar and then talk to one of our researchers who's studying the ant species in that part of the world. And actually at one point I gave a presentation to some of our trustees and we just had the computer software up and running with uh, just tracking the space station as it orbited the Earth. and my time came to present and as we pulled away from the space station we saw that it was right over the Amazon and you can actually see at the resolution we were showing uh, deforestation through the, the Amazon and uh, it was a very striking moment for all of us in the room because just serendipitously we were looking at uh, a very important message that we're actually going to be trying to convey here at the Academy. We're opening up the doors to sciences other than astronomy as well because we're using digital images, we can just as easily be flying through a model of a DNA molecule or uh, the structure of uh, a fault line in uh, California. We can look at all kinds of science data sets that uh, were never open to a traditional planetarium.